as is customary here at the nation's side of excitement, the introduction of last week's award winners and main event winners. And to do the honors, my pleasure to send you down trackside to Ken Squire. Thank you very much and a good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the site of excitement for another evening of automobile racing, featuring tonight the street stocks and the flying tiger division of the American Canadian Tour. We would point out to you, if you're new to the track, what means as much to these drivers as anything is the appreciation that the racing fans show for their efforts on this high bank quarter mile. Introducing first, car number 83, the winner of the Wagner break of the race for his outstanding performance a week ago. Let's have a nice round of applause for Brian Campbell, number 83. <laughs> the championship flags flying in center field at Thunder Road. The flag of the defending track champion, the late Joey LeCare Jr. is at stage left, number 61. <laughs> Introducing the winner of the Street Stock Championship. His battle flag flying in center field. Let's have a fine ovation for his first win of the racing season for Brent Courier. <laughs> and it has been a decade and a half since this gentleman won a triple crown. He is a former track champion of the Speedway. He won a main event about a year ago but last Thursday night, he put it on in one of the most dramatic finishes of the season, winning by about two feet. Ladies and gentlemen, former Thunder Road track champion, the Kentucky Colonel, and the flag is number 77 for Tom Tiller. Tom Tiller, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Ken, I'd like to take a minute just to thank the people that come up here every Thursday night. Uh, they're the greatest people in the world. And the other night after my win, I got out of the car and all those people cheering and everything, it really brings back memories. And uh, I don't expect, expect to win every race here, but it really did feel good to win one. Good luck to you tonight, Tom. <laughs> Have a great evening. Remember, Thomas Michael T-Bone Curley has three rules for Thunder Road. Rule number one. Have a great time. Rule number two, be respectful to the folks around you. And if other folks are not being respectful, please let the security know. They'll do something to help you and tell your friends about it. It's still, I don't care if it's Talladega or Daytona, this is still the best racing you're going to see anywhere for the money. All right, thank you, Ken Squire. Wally Watson, please report to the announcer's tower. Wally Watson to the announcer's tower, please. Here on top of Corey Hill, the Chevy Thunder Thrill Show will roll out in just a short while. But first, opening round qualifier for the Allen Lumber Street Stocks, the Crunch Bunch. Those of you that have just arrived missed the excitement. First practice rounds for the street. We flipped our 12th race car of 1991 in the back straightaway. Paul Schnabel's car number 95, he's already loaded and headed for home. He said, to heck with the Chetwoods, I've had my thrill show. First round qualifier for the Allen Lumber Streets coming out of the Speedway for heat number one. Number 42, Paul Phillips will be your pole center outside. This fellow's been upside down not once, but twice in 91. The 56 of Rick Fleury. Steve Lovely in the 54, the number 10 is Skip Manning. Rick Gilliland in the number 70, the 68 is Spudge McKenzie. Ricky Dennis in the 32, the 72 is Tom Vermeck. Rapid, Ralph Rockwell in the 81, the number one of Jimmy Young. And riding shotgun, the number eight machine is Jason Leo. Here we go, heat number one for the Crunch Bunches under the green flag. Paul Phillips with the lead, almost drives it off the racetrack. Oh, look out, the 42's all over himself. They're four wide on the back stretch. Thankfully, Phillips is not on the actual racetrack. Out on top in the number 54 machine. We've got a yellow coming out. we got a bumper down in the middle of turn four. Watch this action. Here they come. Half the field hasn't seen the yellow yet. Here comes the bumper. Kabang, kabing, kaboom, kabang. No problem. Who dropped the bumper? I think it's the 10 of Skip Patton. We're ready to race. Gilliland on the inside.
inside. Flurry on the outside, and Ricky Dennis and Rapid Ralph Rockwell. Here they come. Nope, 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 nope. Try it again. As Paul Phillips scrambling terribly to catch up to the field under yellow. Look out. Don't spin it there, Paul. All right. Now they're formed up and ready. The 70 of oh, here comes Steve Lovely back. The longer they go, the more cars come back. Gilliland in the 70. Flurry in the 56, then Dennis and Rockwell. Green is out. Rick Flurry up high in the 56 is your leader. Keep an eye on the Thunder Chicken. Here comes Rapid Ralph up the outside. Ralph Rockwell, 81 goes to second, right behind Jimmy Young in the one machine. Jimmy Young down low in the one, Ralph Rockwell in the 81. Rockwell, your new leader in turn number three. 56, Rick Flurry back to second. Jimmy Young on the inside now is third. 81, Ralph Rockwell, the 56, Rick Flurry. Then Jimmy Young in the number one machine. Keep an eye on second and third. Flurry trying to hold. second place. 56 Flurry trying to hold it off. Young on the outside. Good racing in four. Second spot goes to Jimmy Young. Young in the number one takes over second. This time by we'll have two laps to go. Rapid Ralph Rockwell out in front. Jimmy Young now second. Rick Flurry 56 is third then Gilliland. Rick Dennis and Jason Lee White flag is set to fly this time. One more lap remaining for Rapid Ralph Rockwell. Final time down the back straightaway. Rockwell in the Thunderbird. Out of turn number four. Checkered flag is out here on to Ralph Rockwell. Jimmy Young is second. Rick Flurry is third. And Ricky Dennis and Jason Leo. Sean McFarlane in the 70 tries the bank shot on the final lap. It does not work. And he finishes up in the number six spot. Third qualifier, the 56 of Rick Flurry Jr. Second in car number one, Jimmy Young from Morrisville. And ladies and gentlemen, winner in heat number one for the Allen Lumber Street Stocks, car number 81 from Walker Ralph Rockwell. How about it, ladies and gentlemen? Let's get things started tonight. Put your hands together for the rapid Ralph Rockwell. Car number 81, the Thunder Chicken. You're winner in heat no number war. All right, second round qualifier coming out. On the point, rookie driver in the Allen Lumber Street Division, the 33 of Kurt Carpenter. Outside Carpenter, car number 17, that's Bob Patton. The 71, Wild Bill Barkham, starts on the inside of two, outside the 78 of Don Lowell. Inside three, the other half of the twin brother combination, the 87 is Ron Lowell. Then the 73, former track champion here at Thunder Road, Craig Vance from Danville. The 03, Rod Weston. Car number seven, Dizzy Dean Gallison. Rose Air Sear in the Deathmobile, car number 60, the 38 of Claude Cross, Mike Rivers in the 47, and the 12 of David Foster. Field is set in heat number two, here they come, Green is out on heat number two. Bob Patton up high, look out, gets nailed, and around he goes. Front row tangles, oh no, 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 no. Yellow flag is out as we've got cars from here to Look out, the 78's completely out of control. The left front tire is just about broken off that machine. Don Lowell, doing a bit of agricultural racing, is going to have to take it to the pits. Then Craig Vance, Kurt Carpenter, and Bob Patton. On the outside of row three, David Foster, that number 12, that was the car he drove all the way through high school. Gave him many great years of service, and as punishment, he races it now in front of the road and puts it in the wall. Nice job. 71, Wild Bill Barkham and Dizzy Dean on the outside. Good racing for the lead. Five cars under a blanket on turn number three. Barkham on the inside is your leader. Dean Gallison up high in the number seven, trying to 
challenge back now. Good racing on the back chute. 71, Barkham has her. Up the inside, here comes the Deathmobile. Look at all the black cars. It looks like a funeral march out there. We ought to be playing some kind of a dirge. Bill Barkham, your leader, and here comes the Deathmobile. Rose Air Sear going to the outside for the lead in turn four. Sear, your leader at the line. Rose Air Sear up the high line. 71 Barkham down low. Mike Rivers thinking about three deep. Look out there sideways and four gathering it up. The Deathmobile now. Sear in the 60, 71, Billy Barkham, and here comes Mikey Rivers now up the outside. Rivers in the 47 wants the number two spot, and he's got it at the line. Mike Rivers around the hard way to second place, right behind the 38 of Claude Cross. Wild Bill now going backwards in the 71 with two laps to go now. comes from inside the fifth row to get it done in heat number two. The 47, Mike Rivers, the 38 of Claude Cross, finishing up also in the top three. Ladies and gentlemen, how about it for the Mid-State Auto, Deathmobile, Rosair Sear from Washington, your winner. Dollar right now, just a dollar a pop for the 50-50. And how about it one more time, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Rosair Sear, your heat two winner for the Crunch Bunch. All right, third round for the straights. The 02, Ted Clark will be your pole center outside. The double zero, Joe Stephan. Wild Willie Herring, Econ number six, goes inside of row two, outside. Last week's B feature winner, the 84, Sean McFarlane. Ricky Roberts in the 36, the five of purple, Perry Fleming, side by side at row three. Car number 58, Brendan Moody. Then the 14, the Gerber baby, Chet Devarney Jr. Mark Barnier in the zero. Last week's main event winner, Brent Currier in the 30. And the 85 from Randolph is Cal Pula. Here they come. Heat number three, looking for a go. Green flag is out. Ted Clark on the inside of the 02. Joe Stephan outside, double zero. Side by side, they go in a three. Clark on the inside with a nose up is your leader. O2, Teddy Clark on top of the field. Double zero, Joe Stephan. Bill Harry in the sixth, then Ricky Roberts, and the 84, McFarlane on the outside. Wild Willie Herring running the low groove. He's got second now. Herring in the six moving up. 36, Ricky Roberts, and here comes the Gerber baby. Chuck Devaney in the 14 now for fourth place. Chad Clark pulling away in the 02. Here comes Ricky Roberts. 36 up on the outside, loses traction in three. 14, Chet Devarney moving on the outside, right behind Brent Currier in the 30. Fast cars beginning to move out of the back. Here comes Currier on the outside. Currier in the 30, wants the number four spot in four. O2, Teddy Clark out at the front. Bill Herring in the six. 36, Ricky Roberts, then the Gerber baby and Brent Currier. Four cars racing for second. 
second. With two laps to go now. Two laps to go, and the baby gets down low. Chet Devoney taking over the third spot. White flag is coming out. One more time for Teddy Clark. Bill Herring is second. Chet Devoney up the outside. Checkered flag coming out. Ted Clark, your winner. Delaney gets the number two spot. Bill Harry, Brent Kerr, and Ricky Roberts. Nice run by the Gerber baby as Chet Devaney comes out of the number eight spot to qualify in second. Wild Willie Herring, the number six is third. But ladies and gentlemen, wire to wire in heat number three, the 02, Ted Clark, your winner. Well, the Gerber's got new fenders, new hood, new nose on the car this week. Didn't waste any time christening them. To go, this car was barrel rolling through the infield, but tonight he's in victory lane for heat number three. How about it, ladies and gentlemen? A round of applause for Clark Ewitter. Fourth and final qualifier coming out for the Crunch Bunch. Boy, we got a ton of street stocks tonight. Six street stocks on pit road tonight. 46. It's an off night. We usually have more. Well, zero 04, Francis Miller draws the pole for Heat 4. Outside the number zero 01 is David Patton. Les Abbey in the 53, the 69. Big Daddy and his racing caddy. Don LeHue in the Cadillac Seville. The 77, Frenchy LaFountain. Doug Murphy in the number 80. The 25 is Steve Copping, then Terry Rail in the 11. Jerry Humiston in the 19. 64, flying Brian Williams. And at the back of the pack, the point leader, the Enduro Warrior, Monty LaMare in car number 48. Here we go. Heat four for the Crunch Bunch. Francis Miller inside line with the break in the 04. The 0-1, David Patton, 53, Les Abbey, then Big Daddy. Free wide on the front shoot. Big Daddy outside in the 69 Cadillac. He takes over fourth. Free wide in a turn number three now. Everybody going for it. The 04, Francis Miller, your leader. 01, David Patton moving in now in second. The 53, Los Abbey, 69, Big Daddy. Francis Miller trying to hold on to the back straightaway. Patton in the 01. Los Abbey, Big Daddy, Steve Copping in the 25, coming into it now. Miller gets the job done on the 04 machine, starts on the pole and never gives it up all the way. How about it, ladies and gentlemen? Wire to wire winner in heat number four, Francis Miller in the 04. Francis 
Chris Miller. They say green is bad luck, but apparently he disagrees. Either that or it's the only color he had. Miller in the 04 gets the job done in heat number four. How about it, ladies and gentlemen, as he returns the colors on his lap of honor. Francis Miller, heat four, winner for the Crunch Barge. All right, now we'll step up a notch. The Pepsi Flying Tiger is rolling onto the speedway behind the Cody Chevrolet pace car. On the point, the second generation driver from Montpelier, Vermont, Jim Gallison Jr. in the Pelletier's Quick Lube Machine. Outside Gallison, the number 93 from Barry is Brian Coburn. The 47, the Jerry Parentoni paving car, Mark Graves from Barry on the inside of row two. Outside the Richmond office equipment, 97, Dave Gibbs from Jericho. The 85, Mike Pelkey from Barry. Last week's winner, the Kentucky Colonel Tom Tiller in the 77. Mike Knapp in the 80, the 25 of Dave Whitcomb. Car number five, Pat Corbin, and riding shotgun, the 75, Pete Fecto from Morrisville. One car, oh, check that, we've got a driver change in the 75, that's Dwayne Lanfear out back. Lanfear, who lost a motor in his own machine, is hooked to ride in the Pete Fecto car. Field is under green, and Jim Gallison Jr. is away with the 35, down low, Mark Gray's taking it over. Graves in the Ford Thunderbird, has the lead in four. 85, Mike Pelkey down on the inside for second. Right behind the 80 of Mike Knapp. Pat Corbett in the five as Gallison goes backwards on the back shoe. Mark Graves at the front of the pack now. Seven, Graves, your leader. Mike Pelkey in the 85, the 80, Mike Knapp, and here comes Pat Corbett to the high groove. Pat Corbett up high in the number five, trying to draw a bead on the number three spot now. Mark Graves in the four, the Mopar, Mike Pelkey, then the Buicks of Knapp and Corbett. Way done this time for Mark Graves. Graves in the 47 out in front. Lucky for his first victory of the 91 season, Mark Graves in the Ford Thunderbird. The 85, Mike Palkey, then Mike Knapp and Pat Corbett, top four qualifiers. Dwayne Lanfear takes the 75 down pit road. Lanfear in the peak Fecto machine takes it to the garage area. Two laps to go this time for Mark Graves. The hometown driver trying to get it done and he won for the Tigers. White flag will come out this time. Graves in the 47 is one lap away. Palkey right behind him in second. Mike Knapp in the 80. The five of Corbin. Checkered flag coming out. Give it to Mark Graves in the 47. Mike Palkey, Mike Knapp, and Pat Corbett, the top four finishers in heat number one. So Mark Graves, back on the Tiger Tour for the first time in a couple of seasons, made his debut two weeks ago in his brand new Ford Thunderbird. And that's his first checkered flag of the year, ladies and gentlemen. The Jerry Parentoni paving, car number 47, Mark Graves, your winner in Heat 1. Mike Pelkey in the 80, uh, 85, rather, finishes up in second. Third goes to the 80 of Michael Knapp, fourth spot to Pat Corbett in car number five as Mark Graves pulls away with the colors. Round of applause in turn four. Mark Graves from Barry the Ford Thunderbird, your winner. Heat number two for the Tigers rolling out. We got some heavy hitters to go in this one. Car number 22, Gary Karen will start on the point outside. 
last year's Thunder Road Street Stock Champion, car number 20, Tony Andrews. The 69, Vienne's Contracting Machine, the flipper, Rupert Irwin from Waterbury. And outside in car number one, Red Mead. Richard Bootsy in the 13, the 23 is Mike Potter. Joey LeCare in the 15, the 68 is Jim Silly. Car number 17, Greg Lyman. The 14 is Phil Scott. And first time out, car number nine, that's Frenchie LaFountain doing double duty tonight. First time out of the former Alex Hart machine. Green flag out on heat number two for the Tigers. The 22, Gary Karen. Tony Andrews in the 20, then the flipper and Red Mead out of four. front of the field, Karen in the 22 is your leader. Tony Andrews looking downstairs, bumping in four, takes him around. Look out, Irene, everybody piling in. Five cars coming together at the exit of turn number four. Gary, Karen, Rupert Irwin, Red Mead, Mike Potter, and Frenchie LaFalta. Next time around, we'll take a green. Well, field will stay under the take waters. Apparently, we got one car out of line. Irwin and Meade, Bootsy and Potter, Silly and LeCare. Here we go. Green is out. Red Meade off the outside gets the jump. Meade and Carnival on your leader. Mike Potter, 23 on the outside. Trying to drive around the flipper in turn four. Potter has second place. Side line takes the lead in the Ford Thunderbird. 23, Mike Potter looking outside on the front shoot. 69, Rupert Irwin. Richard Bootsy in the 13, and here comes Jim Silly out of the back. 68, Silly beginning to go to work now. On the outside line, the 68 Oldsmobile moving up. Jim Silly takes over fourth, goes to the outside of the flipper for third. Mike Potter going high on Red Mead. Outside line beginning to move up now. Mike Potter pulling up on the red head for the number one position. Mead down low in the Ford. Potter in the Pontiac. The Buick of Rupert Irwin. Oldsmobile for Jim Silly. Top four cars under a blanket on the back shoot. It's Mike Potter. As Rupert Irwin, Red Me, Jim Silly get the job done, but at the front of the pack, ladies and gentlemen, the DJS Transport, Windshield World, Pontiac, Mike Potter, your winner in the 23. Great job of recovery by Gary Caron, who came all the way from the back in car number 22 to finish in the fifth spot. Red Me, car number one, takes fourth. Rupert Irwin, the 69, is third. Second spot from the back of the field goes to Jim Silly in the 68. And carrying the colors on the back straightaway, a strong running qualifying tonight for the Oster from Plainfield.
Mike Potter in the DJS Transport Pontiac. How about it, ladies and gentlemen, as he completes his lap of honor, a round of applause for a job well done. Mike Potter, your winner in the 23. Jerry Flanders to the tower, please. All right, here comes heat number three. Heat number three for the Tigers, rolling out on the point, the Ford. Car number 94, Guy Brown from Crossbury. Outside point, the number 31, Lance Ferno from Williamstown and a Buick Somerset. The 44 from Chelsea is Dean Kennedy. Car number 57, Jim Burke. Big Bigelow from St. Johnsbury in the number four, the 83 of Brian Campbell. Kip Stockwell in car number 16, the double zero of Steve Miller. Berger Blake in the number 27 machine, and first time out in 1991, the 62 machine is Jeff Perry. Field is set in turn number four. Third round qualifier for the Tigers is underway. Lance Furrow, outside line, moving up in the 31 to take the lead. Guy Brown holding on to second. Whoop, the 44, Kennedy's into the infield. Jimmy Martin coming up on the outside of Guy Brown for second. Dean Kennedy refires the 44, takes it out of harm's way as Burton takes over second in the 57. Jimmy Martin now second. Brian Campbell, 83, looking for third right behind. Going backwards on the inside lane. Campbell, 83, moving up to third now. Keep an eye on the double zero. Steve Miller. Miller from the back of the pack now. A little challenge for the number four spot. Brown on the inside. Miller up high. Guy Brown holding it off in the 94. Back to the high groove in the double zero, trying to move around Guy Brown. Side by side, now in turn four, it's Miller up high taking over. Right behind the 27, Berger Blake. Blake, the 89 track champion, out of the back of the field, looking to get qualified now. Berger Blake takes over the number five position. to go now, Lance Furno at the front. The 31, trying to go all the way with it. Stay back a little, okay? White flag will come out on a turn four. 31, Lance Furno. Jim Burton in the 57, 83, Brian Campbell. Final time, down the back shoot. Furno in the 31, looking for the checkered flag. He number three to Lance Furno. Jimmy Martin is second. Brian Campbell, Steve Miller, and Berger Blade. Nice job by the rookie driver, Lance Furno, who's been making steady progress all season long on this Pepsi Flying Tiger Tour. Starts on the outside point and takes it all the way to the checkers. Ladies and gentlemen, the Arlington Enterprises. Buick Lance Furno from Williamstown, your winner. Not a chance. Proceeds go to the driver's point fund and tonight's ticket winner. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, Lance Furno, 31 is your winner. Tyler Main to the tower, please. Semi-feature for the Crunch Bunch. Top qualifiers from each of our heat races ready to roll now. The 02, Ted Clark. 04, Francis Miller. Rick Flurry and David Patton in the 01. Wild Willie Herring in the 53 of Les Abbey. Chet Delarney, the Gerber Baby, and the Deathmobile. Rose Air Sear in car number 60. The 81, Ralph Rockwell. Then Claude Cross, Jimmy Young, and Mike Rivers at the back. This ought to be a good one. Street stocks ready to roll in their semifinal. Here they come out of four and the green flag is out. 0 2 Ted Clark. 0 4 Francis Miller on the outside with it. Miller up high trying to hold on to the lead. Clark coming back at him in four. Side by Front of the field, 02 Clark. 
it. Flurry second. Patton with the ball to the inside, making it three deep. Look out. Rick Flurry gets out of it. Teddy Clark in the OT leader. Rick Flurry sideways in the 56, and they take him three wide on the back shoot. Francis Miller back to second. Look out. Seven 
second. Mike Pelkey third. Lance Ferno and the flipper to 69 moving now. Rupert Irwin around the outside of Red Bay now has the number five position. The 47, Mark Graves once again showing his tail to the field. Mike Pelkey beginning to look to the outside of Jim Barton for the number two spot. As Mark Graves once again dominating here in the semi. The Ford Thunderbird is dialed in. Oh, look out, he's in trouble. Graves is in trouble as the right front tire goes flat. Oh, what a heartbreaker for Mark Graves. The right front tire goes Taking a look high on Barton. Can't find the room in three and four. The veteran, Jimmy Barton, holding on to the lead now. Pelkey second in the 85. 31, Ferno. Here comes Mikey Knapp on the outside. The 80 machine going to work up high in turn three and four. Knapp for third place. Mike Knapp, rim rides on the outside. Up he goes on the high ground. Keeps it low on the back straight away. Nap looking high for second. Final lap in three. The 80 going for it. Checkers are out. Jim Barton, Mike Pelkey, Mike Nap, and Lance Ferno. A strong effort here in the semi by Mike Nap as he comes all the way out of the back to finish up in the third position. Second goes to the 85 of Mike Pelkey. And ladies and gentlemen, this fella came up less than a foot short at the line for the win last week, but tonight he's got himself a semi. The J&A Buick, 57, Jim Burton, your winner. How about it, ladies and gentlemen? A round of applause for your semi-feature winner, car number 57, Jimmy Burton. All right, we're down to it. B feature for the Pepsi Flying Tigers. This is the final chance to qualify tonight. Peter A. Bear to the Victory Lane Souvenir Trailer. Peter A. Bear to the Victory Lane Trailer, please. 50-50 on sale right down front in turn number four. If you're looking for one, now's your chance. There's Kate down in turn four. Don't wait. We're not long away from closing it off tonight. 50-50 down in turn four. All right, B feature, the 25, Dave Whitcomb. Winner on Saturday night at Airborne. Whitcomb forced to the B tonight here at Thunder Road. Outside, two-time Thunder Road track champion in the Tiger Division, the 15 of Joey LeCare. Kip Stockwell in the 16, the 17 of Greg Lyman. Brian Coburn in the 93 machine, the 20 is Tony Andrews. 75. Dwayne Lanfear, the 62 of Jeff Perry, Jim Gallison Jr., Dean Kennedy, Phil Scott, and Frenchie LaFountain bringing up the rear. Here we go. B feature underground. Only the top three drivers will move on to the main event. Top three cars get the option to go to the feature, and it's Dave Whitcomb, Joey LaCare, and Kip Stockwell out of the pack. Ladies and gentlemen, a correction will take the top four tonight to the main event. Top four qualifiers.
Myers to the feature, and that makes the 17 of Greg Lyman the final man. Top four drivers get the option. 17, Lyman on the hot seat, right behind is Dwayne Lanfear. Lanfear, 75, sideways, look out, Brian Coburn's in the wall. Yellow flag is out. Caution on the speedway, the 93, Brian Coburn gets a piece of the rock in four. Dwayne Lanfear may have been putting something down out from under the 75 as he takes it right down pit road. This car is in. 25, Whitcomb, 15, LeCare, then Stockwell and Lyman. Down to the line we go, Green is out. Whitcomb away with the lead, Kip Stockwell second. LeCare back in line third, and here comes Tony Andrews. Tony the Tiger down low in the 20, trying to get the number four spot now. Tony Andrews on the inside. on the left front corner. Joey LeCare and once again Greg Lyman and now the 75 Dwayne Lanfear is up to fifth. Here we go, Green is out again. Dave Whitcomb by half a car length. 16 Stockwell, 15 LeCare. Now beginning to pull away as the 17 Lyman losing ground on it. Some smoke beginning to show off the Dwayne Lanfear machine in the corners. Keep an eye on the 75. He's beginning to show some smoke off the back bumper now. Whitcomb continues to show the way at the front. 16, Stockwell is second, then LeCare and Lanfear. Greg Lyman trying to gain ground, can't do it as he is losing ground on the back straightaway. Only four to transfer, Lanfear, 75, is the man with the final spot. Two laps to go this time. Two laps remaining now. Whitcomb and Kip Stockwell at the front with two to go. White flag coming out this time around. Dave Whitcomb leads it. Stockwell looking low for second place. Final time down the back straightaway. Top four locked in for the main event. Checkered flag coming out in turn number four. Dave Whitcomb, your winner. Stockwell second. Joey LeCare and Dwayne Lanfear, the qualifiers. So the final four names are in the book for the main event tonight for the Pepsi Flying Tigers. Qualifying fourth, the 75 of Dwayne Lanfear. Third to car number 15, Joey LeCare. Second spot, the 16 for Randolph Kip Stockwell. And ladies and gentlemen, your winner 
In the B feature for the Tigers, car number 25 and Dave Whitcomb. For the yellow number street stocks, here's the way they're set to go. On the pole, car number 02, Ted Clark, will be on the inside point. Outside, the 04, Francis Miller, as Clark and Miller once again will square it off in row one. Row two to the 56, Rick Flurry, car number 01 is Dave Patton. Wild Bill Herring in the Martian Motors, car number six goes next in line. Outside from Northfield, the 53 of Les Abbey. Ricky Roberts in the Stone Service, car number 36 is next, outside the 70 of Rick Gillilair. The flashback photo, car number 25, Steve Copping goes in the ninth spot, outside the Berry's transmission, 32 and Ricky Dennis. Dizzy Dean Gallison, the number 7, goes on the inside of an extra, outside the semi-feature winner, Chet DeMarty Jr., the Gerber baby in car number 14. Terry Reel in car number 11, the number 60, the Deaf Mobile is Rosier Sear. Mark Barnier in the Barnier's Trucking, car number 0, then the 81 from Wilkett Rapid Ralph Rockwell. Jimmy Young in the All Seems Fine, car number 1, outside the 47 of Mike Rivers from Essex Junction. Last week's winner, Brent Courier from Johnson in car number 30, outside Courier at starting 20th tonight to John Leo and Son, car number 8 for Jason Leo. The number 12 machine is David Foster, the 85, Cal Poulin, then at the back of the pack, the 64, flying Brian Williams, and the Thunder Road Point leader, Monty Lemaire, from Morrisville in car number 48. Main event of the night for the other number street stocks. Sure. 
returns from the pits. And we are set for a go. Here they come out of turn four. Green is out. Nine laps complete. Sixteen remain. And Rick Fleury has the lead again in the 56. Teddy Clark shuts the door. Miller tries to take it around. Everybody gets through it. 56. Fleury is your leader. Ted Clark is second. The 04 Miller is third. Then Ricky Roberts. Wild Willie and the Gerber. Baby, look out. They got Ricky Dennis sideways. Everybody gets away. Ricky Roberts into the infield in the 36 machine. Chet Devari from 13th now is fifth on the field. Looking up to the outside of Bill Herrick. Diving low now in turn number one. Can't find room to race it. The Gerber baby on the outside wants the number four spot as we're halfway done now. Halfway in the main event for the Crunch Bunch. Devari has fourth. Looking to thread the needle on the back chute. The 04 Miller trying to block the road. The number three automobile. Here comes the baby up the outside. Right behind him, Mike Rivers. Devarney in the 14. 47 Rivers. Rim ride the outside. The baby now is third. Devarney in the third spot. Looking for second out of turn four. Chad Devarney up high going for it. Here comes the baby. He's going for second. Shoot 
Allen scoring, car number 60, Rosier Sear, car number 47, Mike Rivers have been black flagged for rough riding on the final lap. They'll go all the way to the back of the pack. The 60 of Sear, 47 Rivers penalized to the back of the field, but the Gerber baby does not care. They may have to move him up to infant food now. He's graduated. Just wonderful. Chet Tavardi, three years trying, and he's finally a winner tonight. Two-thirds of the triple crown as he got the... Here comes the crew. That's the Brent Courier team. Here comes Chet Sr. in the white T-shirt. How about it for the baby, ladies and gentlemen? He's so happy he could just throw up right now. Oh, yes. Just a wonderful night. Let's go down to Victory Lane and Ken Squire down in Daycare Central. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's go right to the guy who's done it for the first time. Where's your dad? Huh? Let's get him right over here. What a nice night for you fellas. Let's get your front and center. Beautifully driven. You did a fine job tonight. A lot of heavy traffic and you had to work for it. <laughs> we got kind of lucky, I have to say. This is great. We had terrible luck here all year. And everybody wanted me just to run airborne, but this is why I'm still running here. <laughs> All right. That was a tremendous run. Let's go to second place tonight. Second place in an incredible finish. Let's hear it for Rapid Ralph Rockwell. Nice run. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank all my sponsors. Wouldn't be possible to be here without them. Quality Control Stitching, Sweet and Burt Incorporated. And I could really use a tire sponsor right about now. Yeah, I could see it was getting a little, the tires and tubes are doing all right, but the air is showing through. Wild finish. Tell us about that finish. Yeah, I weren't really sure. I knew I was running fourth, and the next thing I knew, I was second. <laughs> well, let's hear it one more time for Ralph Rockwell. And finally, third place tonight in this wild finish. One more time for Brent Cole, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Ken. That was a wild one at the end, but we made it through it. <laughs> yeah, you just barely made it through it. A lot of cars getting scattered, a lot of action in front of you. Must be hard to keep your poise with that kind of action around you. Well, it is. You gotta lose your head out there and, you know, try to stay on the lead lap and you'll know, make it through it. Brent, you got some people you'd like to thank. Yeah, I'd like to thank all my sponsors. There's too many to list. I'd like to thank people on turn four, my mother, all my fans, and my pit crew. They've helped me all through this. Brent Courier, ladies and gentlemen. And let's have one more fine ovation as we put this trio together for all three, but particularly for Chet DeVarney, the Gerber baby. Pulls one off. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a very brief intermission now while we set up the Joey Chitwood Chevy Thunder Show here tonight. Good opportunity for you to stop down and visit Al's French Fries, order yourself up some of the world's best French fries. Cut and prepared right here on the premises. Of course, hamburgers, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, cotton candy, and popcorn, you name it, we've got it. Cycle boardwall crash! Smashing through that boardwall, scattering blazing lumber all over the track. In one of the most brutal and traditional stunts in thrill show history, ladies and gentlemen from Waltham, Massachusetts, here he is, John Mason! John Mason! Track surface because in a few short moments, Kevin Butterfield will be coming down that track at a speed of about 55 miles an hour. He'll lower himself to the track surface and go sliding along behind that automobile. As you can see, he also wears a crash helmet and leather gloves, which he'll use to steer himself down the track. His driver is Tim Chitwood. He'll bring that car around, gaining speed speed, as I mentioned, a speed of about 55 miles an hour down the front straightaway. Here they come, Kevin Butterfield on the back of that automobile, holding on to that safety strap. He begins to lower himself off the automobile, down towards the track surface to perform the slide for life. There he is, Kevin Butterfield, and the slide for life. No helmet and no brains. I said it and I meant it. Hop right up there and put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> 
Wait a minute, Crash. Now, what's the problem? He's going too fast. Now, come on, Crash. Let's do the slide for life. Car didn't move one inch. Here they go down the track. Gaining speed, but look out, Crash. Holy cow, he found out about the wing on the back of that car. And now he's yelling something about his tongue. Crash, that's your tie, not your tongue. Now put it where it belongs and put that crash helmet where your brains are. Those aren't your brains, you idiot. Oh, that's the end that's coming off first. He's going to do the slide without a helmet, without a pad. And without his pants, you talk about an ad coming apart at the seams. There's one for you right there. Poor old Crash, and you hate to see it happen to him. He's such a snappy dresser. Team of drivers, Tim Chitwood and Jimmy Canton out there in those beautiful Camaro Z28s aboard the Honda CR250 motorcycle, prepared by Tough Racing Products of DeKalb, Illinois. We have Corey Scott from Tampa, Florida. Now, they'll engage in those same precision driving maneuvers we saw momentarily. And you're going to see him go bumper to bumper over ramps as Corey Scott will lead them out of turn number three. They get him in there in the line. Mere inches will separate these vehicles. Here comes Corey Scott leading him out of turn number four towards the raised ramp elevations, accelerating towards the ramps, over the ramps. Here they come, Corey Scott in front of those automobiles, diving down into turn number one. Corey Scott will take a lower road towards that raised ramp. Here they come, gaining speed. Corey Scott coming towards the ramp. Accelerating onto the ramp and up and over those automobiles. Ramp elevation number two. Perfectly performed motorcycle car. Precision driving. Seeing is believing. You've seen it here as part at that board wall. As Wild Bill Dominic takes that crashing car provided by our friends at Cody Chevrolet in Montpelier down into turn number three. He'll bring that car back around and down the front straightaway as John Mason will go crashing through the blazing board wall balance and courage combined in this very traditional stunt. Here he comes, John Mason, get your head down, John, smashing through the board wall. Once again, John Mason from Waltham, Massachusetts. He looks none the worse for wear despite that fiery ordeal. They're coming back in front of the grandstand, the human battering ram, here he is. John Mason and his driver, Wild Bill Dummett, I just told you about. Here he is gaining speed, coming down the front straightaway, looking for a spot on the track. Pedal to the metal, cranks the wheel 180 degrees, and down Joey Chipwood the third. Chevrolet Corvette, here he comes down the front straightaway, spinning the car all the way around, Tim Chipwood. Remember, these are stock Chevrolets right off the show. Here comes Tim Chitwood out of turn number one in reverse. Down the front straightaway, he'll be spinning that automobile. Shifting on the fly, goodbye, Tim Chitwood. Perfectly executed reverse spins. Now the of the ultimate in precision driving on all four wheels. Here he comes performing. Reverse spins, one good turn deserves another. Ladies and gentlemen, here they are. Joey Chipwood III and Tim Chipwood. The United States of America that hasn't witnessed the driving talents of Jimmy Canton. As for the star of our show, Tim Chipwood, I mentioned the fact he is the world's number one ranked automobile stuntman. He is also the world record holder for driving an America-made automobile on two wheels. He accomplished this feat in Richmond, Virginia when he drove a Chevrolet 5.9 miles on two wheels. You're getting a taste of that right now. As for Joey Chipwood III, he's 22 years old. This is his first season driving on two wheels, one of only 13 drivers in the world with the ability to drive on two wheels. Coming out of the side of Tim Chipwood's automobile, there he is, Kevin Butterfield, performing the aerial wing walk. You talk about balance. You talk about talent. There it is for you right there on the side of that automobile. Tim Chipwood balancing the weight of the automobile and the weight of that stuntman. They finally power takeoff. And right now, Chuck Forson brings that jet-powered vehicle down the front straightaway. He's about to turn up the boost 25% of the capacity of that jet engine for the Chevy Thunder Fire and Lightning Show. Right now, Chuck Forson really letting it all hang out out there in the back straightaway as he begins to turn up the boost. Heading towards 6,000 horsepower. 
Now, when he comes down the front straightaway this time, he'll be performing something we call burner pops. All you folks along the fences can attest to the fact they are indeed burner pops, as you can feel the heat of Chevy Thunder. They just won't listen. Well, right now, you're about to see something no other jet powered vehicle on Earth can do, and that's go in reverse. Chuck Fortson backing down the front straightaway, the culmination of over 12,000 man hours spent in design and construction, over $150,000 spent on the Chevy Thunder project. Chuck Fortson backing into position right now. Defying the laws of physics, backing towards turn number one in reverse. Well, as I mentioned at the top of this act, Chevy Thunder is indeed the world's fastest street legal pickup truck. By virtue of that engine in the front, we have it licensed in the state of Florida. As for the world record, we set it in a standing quarter mile when Chevy Thunder achieved a speed of 181.9 miles an hour. Now, what makes this remarkable is that Chevy Thunder weighs in at 7,000 pounds. That's a lot of metal moving down the drag strip at 181 miles an hour. Right now, you're about to see 6,000 horsepower unleashed by Chevy Thunder. Ladies and gentlemen, Chevy Thunder, the world's ramp and jump that moving pickup truck. Here comes Tim Chitwood right now, coming into the front straightaway out of turn number four. Here comes Corey Scott in a blaze of glory, gaining speed towards the ramp. He's on the ramp and up and over that moving ramp truck. The perfect execution of a Joey Chipwood Chevy Thunder Show exclusive. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is from Tampa, Florida, Corey Scott, Corey Scott. That vehicle provided by Cody Chevrolet, making his way towards a single ramp elevation. Gaining speed, he'll be up on the ramp, cranking the wheel, up and over and over on its roof, John Mason out there with crash rollovers. Now they check to see if he's all right. They're gonna to try to get that vehicle righted around as he hangs upside down inside. Oh, parked there at the end of the ramps with all the impact of a head-on collision at 55 miles an hour. Here he comes out of turn number three, headed towards turn number four, gaining speed, coming down the front straightaway for the Hollywood Sidewinder Kovash! Smashing into that vehicle over and over, Royal Bill Dominic. We get the high sign, he's emerging from the automobile. The master of mayhem, Wild Bill Dominic! Wild Bill Dominic. All time. He's now coming into those final turns before the front straightaway. Here he comes in a blaze of glory. Gaining speed, will he have the proper speed? We say good luck and may God be with you, Tim Chipwood! The perfect performance of the Chevrolet Aerial Rocket Leap. And in a show where all the stuntmen are superb, Tim Chipwood is spectacular. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Tim Chipwood. And there they are, the stars of the Joey Chipwood Chevy Thunder Show.
tonight for the Pepsi Flying Tigers, and here's how they'll start, ladies and gentlemen, on the point, car number 22, the Karen's Auto Body, Pontiac and Gary Carroll outside in the 31 machine. The Arlington Enterprise is Buick Lance Furno from Williamstown in the 31. Mark Graves in the 47, the 97 of Dave Gibbs starts side by side in row number two. Row three, the 69 of Rupert Owen and the 57, Jim Barton. They ran second and third last week in the main event. In row number four, car 85, Mike Pelkey from the Granite City of Barry outside the Ford Thunderbird from Hyde Park is Red Mead. Big Bigelow in car number four, the 13 is Richard Bootsy. Brian Campbell in the number 83 machine, the 80 is Michael Knapp. The 23, Mike Potter, double zero, Steve Miller in the RL Barnaby trucking machine. The 5, Pat Corbett. 68 is Jim Silling. Berger Blake in the 27 and last week's winner, the Kentucky Colonel Tom Tiller. 25, David Whitcomb. The 16, Kip Stockwell. Joy LeCare in the 15, the 75 to 3, Brian Campbell. We are set to go racing. 30 lap main event for the Pepsi Flying Tigers. Out of turn number 4. as he fails to complete the opening lap of the main. The Suntan Sams, WOKO Pontiac, Miller's car number 00, goes up on the Blake and Loso record, and that'll be the night. Field is correct as they cross over on the front straightaway. Lights go down on the Cody Chevrolet pace car, and we're set to go racing. The Steve Miller automobile heading down pit road, and we're set for a go. Gary Carroll and Lance Ferno, Mark Graves and Dave Gibbs, the flipper, and Jimmy Barton, then Mike Pelkey and Red Mead. One more time on a turn four, green, it's up, and another problem is Joy LeCare throws one. Yellow is out again. A hard night on axles as now Joy LeCare tosses the left rear. Can you believe this? LeCare, the two-time Flying Tiger champion, now slaps the left rear axle off that automobile. These the left rear accessories off that Ford Thunderbird. Two of the top runners here at Thunder Road and two of the three drivers that are tied for the all-time lead in victories on the Tiger Tour are out early tonight. Miller and LeCare take it to the garage and we are lined up for a restart once again. Gary, Karen, and Lance Ferno once again paired off to dance at the front of row one. Mark Graves and Dave Gibbs, Rupert Irwin and Jimmy Martin, then Mike Pelkey and Red Mead, followed by Big Bigelow and the Richard Bootsy. Pace car is in, we're ready for a green. 22, Karen on the inside, 31, Ferno on the outside, then Graves and Gibbs. Here they come one more time, and they've got Mark Graves underneath Ferno for second. Ferno slams the door on Dave Gibbs to hold third. Gibbs is fourth. Then the 69, Rupert Irwin. 57, Jim Barton to the 85. Mike Pilkey moving up the inside lane. 22, Gary Karen leads it, but here comes Marky Graves. Sideways out of four. Side-by-side battle for the number five spot. 69, Rupert Irwin. 57, Jim Barton. Last week, they were second and third at the end of the main event, and tonight they are on the move again. Barton on the outside has it. Jim Barton, 57, with a nose in front. Back comes the flipper on the back straightaway. Side-by-side. 
five of Pat Corbett, Mike Potter, and over the top of turn three somewhere is the Kentucky Colonel. Tom Tiller, full bar over the top of turn three. Red Meat is back out of the way. He's shed of the nose on car number one. Pat Corbett is out of the five with severe damage on the left front corner, and he's not happy. Still no sign of the Colonel as Red Mead goes to the garage area. Safety crews are out over the bank looking for Tom Tiller. That's too bad. They'll have to burn some midnight oil to get back in action this weekend with the Bud National 500 at Santa Ana. The ACT late models, the 77 may be able to rejoin this thing. If you have not yet bought yourself an advance sale ticket to San Air, they will be on sale tomorrow and Saturday at the usual ACT advance sale ticket locations. The American Canadian Tour office in Waterbury, Al's French Fries in Burlington, M&M Beverage locations in Barrie and Montpelier. Project car number 80. Gary Brown and the crew making some repairs on that machine. Nap will fall in at the rear. Mike Knapp started 12th in this event, but he'll go all the way to the back now. Hey, Steve Miller is back with eight laps complete, 22 remaining. Karen on the inside, Graves on the outside, then Furrow and Gibbs, Pelkey and the Hooper. Yeah. 
Houston, 31, Lance Berno, 85, Mike Pelkey, then Big Bigelow, and Jimmy and Richard Bootsy. Karen and the 47 of Graves have broken away from the field. Two car battle at the front of the pack. Both drivers looking for their first wins of 1991. Karen in the Pontiac, Graves in the Ford, then the Buick of Lance Berno, Mike Pelkey in the Mopar, the top four. tonight, Gary Caron, Mark Graves, Lance Ferno, the top three. Let's go down to Ken Squire. Well, let's go to third place first tonight. Lance Ferno from Williamstown had himself a tremendous ride. Let's have a great ovation for this kid that really came through. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. How about the ride? He had a great battle with a friend of yours in that Chrysler product for a while. Yeah, he was all over me. It was, it was tough. I don't know if he's going to get by me or not, but we managed to pull it off. You did a great job of driving. He really gave you a lot of pressure, and you stayed up under it well. Thanks a lot. Are you headed for Sonair, or are you going to sit that one out? I don't know. We're debating now. <laughs> All right. Lance Perna, let's hear it again for number 31. Now let's get here with a guy who got married on this racetrack. And incidentally, if any of you want to do that, of course, the invitation's always open. It's for free. You can get married right out here anytime you want. He happened to do that. And tonight he's in second place. Mark, it's great to see you back. How about it for Mark Graves? Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank a few of my sponsors, Jerry Perrin, Tony Paving, Travers Associates, uh, Moral Sandblast, which helped me out. They weren't really a sponsor, but they helped drastically. And all my pit crew and the long nights and long days that it took to get here. Well, you certainly put a nice car together. You seem nervous when it's over. You drove like there wasn't a nerve in your body. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> all right. Well, you did a great job tonight. Let's hear it again for Mark Graves, ladies and gentlemen. And as you heard Dave Moody say, 
your winner tonight. Let's have a tremendous ovation for car number 22, Gary Karen. Nice one, it was pretty much yours all night long. Well, we couldn't help it. You started on the pole, it's gonna help. Yeah, I did. Mark Graves tried to give you a run. This thing runs well, you drove it well. Well, thank you. Mark Graves was running real good. I could see him there all the time. He was a, he was a threat. Now, there's a 25 lap special for the Tigers up at Sinai. Are you gonna try to take that in or are you gonna sit that one out? Well, I'm not gonna be there myself. My brother's gonna be running his car up there. All right, well, terrific. Well, congratulations tonight on a great run. Certainly did yourself proud. Let's hear it again, ladies and gentlemen, for Gary Karen. And the winner of the Bond Auto Award tonight is Dave Whitcomb. You really had your hands full out there. Yeah, well, it was kind of a funny race tonight. I just snuck through all the accidents, which was real lucky. And the car went pretty good, you know, not real good, but it went okay. Yeah, it was a strange race because the front guys got out and out back. They just kind of settled down and, and worked their own way. First the inside line worked, then after that crash up in uh, three, it was the outside lane that was beginning to take place. Yeah, that's right. That's the way the track seemed to be. It seemed kind of funny to me all night. I never really got the car hooked up real good, but, you know, here I am out here anyway, so. Well, congratulations to you on behalf of Bond Auto for a really fine job. Let's hear it for Dave Whitcomb, who always gives you a great race anytime he performs here at the site of excitement. There's another event to follow. Uh, it's the B on the street stocks. We know a lot of you have youngsters and want to get yourselves home, and if you want to, by all means, take leave. Be very careful if you're staying. Again, those uh, parking lots tonight, we have a lovely audience here. So uh, be patient with each other, and hopefully you'll all be back next week. There's another event lining up to be run. Again, the pits will be open after the races. That's one of the nice things. Out of lumber street stocks, ready to shake, rattle, and roll. Final event of the night. The 42, Paul Phillips. The 17, Robert Patton in row number one. Steve Lovely in the 54, the 71 of Wild Bill Barkham. The 78 machine is Don Lowell, the double zero, Joe Stafford. Sean McFarland in the 84, the 69, Big Daddy, Don LeHue. Skip Patton in the number 10, the 73 is Craig Vance. Kirkbull Perry Fleming in the, the uh, number five machine, then the 80 of Doug Murphy. 68, Spuds McKenzie, the 03 of Ronnie Weston. Brandon Moody in the 58, the 19, Jerry Humiston. 77, Frenchie LaFountain, and a diver change tonight in the 87 machine. Claude Cross has found himself a ride after all. So Cross will start in the 87 on the tail tonight. Final event of the one, one week from tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we've been informed next Thursday night will be the mid-season championship for the street stocks that they missed when they got thrown out a couple of weeks ago. Next week will be the double points race to the Crunch Bunch and the B Features Undergrade. Paul Phillips in the 42. Phillips into the infield. Whoop, whoop. Bounding through the snow, he goes. Don't come, no, 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 don't do that. That would not have been a good move. Wild Bill Barkham in the 71 is your leader. The 54 is Steve Lovely, 78. Don Lowell, then Joe Steffen downstairs in the double zero for fourth. Side for the number five spot, right behind the 73 of Craig Vance. Wild Bill Barker. He's flipped twice this year. He's on his third race car of 91, and right now he's a leader. 54, Steve Lovely is second. The 78 of Don Lowell is third. Three car breakaway at the front. Then the double zero, Joe Steffen, Big Daddy and Craig Vance. Purple Perry's headed to the pits. Ron Weston, the 03 up on the outside, having problems. Weston may have a flat tire. No, he's dragging a bumper too. He's got all kinds of difficulties. Hold on to your hats. They're coming up to put a lap on the 42. Phillips in the 42 and now about to get lapped by. Steve Lovely now gaining ground. The 54 is there on the front straightaway. Whoa! Lovely gets into the back of Bill Barkham. The 71 hanging on to it. 71 Barkham, 54 Lovely. Then the
the 78 of the Oil, top three automobiles. Bill Barker beginning to pull away now. The 71 machine out in front. the front, Barkham and Lovely. The 78 of Lowell beginning to be reeled in by Joe Steffen now. Double zero Steffen, 69, Don LaHue, and then the Spudster on the outside. Laps winding down on the B feature for the Crunch Bunch. Police officer to the tower, please. 71, Wild Bill Barkup. On his third car of 1991, he totaled one, he flipped the other, but this time around he's a winner. Great run for Billy Barkup. Steve Lovely second in the 54, the 87, nope, the 78, I believe, is third. a police officer to the tower, please. Great way to wrap it up tonight as the B feature for the streets goes, what was it, wire to wire? Squire is down trackside with the happy top three. All right, well, a great night tonight. Don't forget, next week is another spectacular show here. Hope you'll come and bring your friends and have a great time. Well, the generations of Barkhams continue. And here is the cousin of Ron Barkham. So you're, what, the third or fourth generation of racers. Wild Bill Bar. We haven't had a Wild Bill since Wild Bill Biggins back in the 50s. Congratulations on a great run. Thanks. It's been a long time coming. Destroyed two cars. My crew stuck with me. My girlfriend stuck with me. My sponsors, Gordy Pickett's, uh, TNR Garage. I knew it was coming. and just had to wait for it. Well, you drove it really well tonight. Let's have a nice round of applause for Bill Barkham, number 71. Another one of those Barkhams, and those guys can really drive. From second place tonight, from Warren, Vermont, Steve Lovely. Let's hear it for Steve. Some of your fans are hanging in there tonight. Nice run. Thank you. We got a few. I was trying to catch Bill. I wanted to give uh, my niece and nephew their uh, little anniversary present. It's Monday, so. For oh. Anniversary. Uh -huh. They'll take second. All right. Well, they did a good job. Congratulations to you. See you next week here at the Road. Sure be. All right, and finally, third place tonight. Don Lowell from Wolcott. Anybody left here from Wolcott tonight? Up there in God's country. No. Yeah. I'd just like to thank my sponsors, Minoche Corporation, LNL Farm Equipment, 
And a special thanks to uh, Mr. Stakes in East Hartford, Connecticut. They came down tonight to see me race. And uh, I'd like to also thank my two boys for helping with my car, my brother-in-law, Kevin Sylvester, for helping me, and also my wife. Well, you did a great job. And he remembered everybody he was supposed to thank. That's better than anybody else has done here tonight. Good luck to you next week. In the B main, the king of the road is Wild Bill Barkham. You're going to hear a lot more about him. Thank you so much for coming and being such a nice audience tonight. On behalf of Tom Curley, we hope you'll be coming back real soon. And don't forget, coming on Labor Day, it's the annual Milk Bowl. It's Vermont's biggest race. We think it's one of the most special races in the country. If you haven't seen it before, bring some friends and come on out. And if you're a regular, we know you'll be here for it. The American Canadian Tour will return here with John Paul Cabana, Robbie Crouch, Junior Handley, all the great new stars, Derek Lynch, will all be here for the Milk Bowl Labor Day weekend. The American.